to take a short look today at uh, geometric means and uh, how they apply to right triangles and more importantly similar figures in right triangles. We're just coming out of that chapter on similar figures, similar triangles we spent a lot of time on. And now we're going to look in our next unit, it's going to be on right triangles. We're going to see how that application of similar triangles goes over to right triangles. Uh, and specifically some things in terms of the geometric mean. Now you may remember we talked about a proportion. We typically wrote it this way, A over B equals C over D. And we said another way you could write that proportion was this way. When you and then when we cross multiplied up here, we got A times D equals B times C. It was called, called the cross products property. Uh, and you, something that you learned in Algebra 1. It was a property of proportions that if you cross multiplied things were still equal. In geometry, said we, we said it also had that term, uh, the means and extremes theorem. The product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And when, we, when they talk about the geometric mean between two numbers, that's when both of these terms are going to be the same. So we could set this up and say, uh, if I was trying to find, well, let me, let me word it this way. We'll write it out and say x so x is the geometric mean between I'm just going to use two variables here a and b if the following is true a over x equals x over b Notice, if we were to set this up in a proportion and write it out with a to x equals x to b, x, the means would be the same, which is why this is referred to as the geometric mean. So I could set up some problems and say, find the geometric mean between the following two numbers. So let me do a couple examples of this. Three problems finding the geometric mean between these. So when they're asking you to find the geometric mean, we're going to put the variable in the denominator of one ratio and the numerator of the other. I'm just going to use x in this case. And then the numbers that it's the geometric mean between go into the other two spots, the extremes, right? Means and extremes. So now to solve this, we're just going to cross multiply. We're going to get x times x, which is x squared, and then 4 times 36. Now, one thing you should get in the habit of doing is when I multiply here and get x squared and I know I'm solving this for x, I know bottom line is I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides to solve this for x. If I see two terms that I'm multiplying together and I notice that some of them, either one or both of them, is already a perfect square, rather than multiplying together, I'd rather just write it as 4 times 36. Why am I doing that? Because now, when I take the square root of both sides, as long as these terms are being multiplied together, I can break that down into the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 36 is 6. And then 2 times 6 is going to give us 12. Again, not that you couldn't multiply 4 times 36 together and get 144 and take the square root of that, but if you happen to get one term that is a perfect square and one that isn't, you're going to have to break it down eventually anyway when you simplify, so why not leave it that way? Let's look at the next one. What's the geometric mean between 2 and 12? So again, I'm going to set 2 over x equals x over 12. Cross multiply here, I'm going to get x squared equals 24. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Oops, not going to the whole thing. Take the square root of both sides, the square root of x squared is x. Now, 24 is not a perfect square. This is something we went over last week. So now I've got to simplify underneath the radical. 
Is it a perfect square? No. Does it have any factors that are perfect squares? Well, 24 does. And the factors of 24 that are perfect squares are 4 and 6. Always list, again, this is the habit I got into. Always list the perfect square term first. Always circle it because I know something has to happen to it when I take the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And then the 6 is still under the radical sign. So the square, uh, geometric mean between 2 and 12 would be 2 root 6. What if we had some radicals in there? So 5 root 2 and 6 root 2. Again, I'm going to put 5 root 2 up here over x equals x over 6 root 2. We're going to cross multiply here. So now I'm going to get x squared equals, I'm just going to write these out, 5 root 2 times 6 root 2. Now you got to remember your properties of, uh, of multiplying radicals together. We multiply coefficients together. And then we multiply the radicands together, the term under the radical sign. So let me just rewrite this. It's going to be x squared equals 5 times 6 is 30. Root 2 times root 2 would give us root 4, which is 2. And then 30 times 2 is 60. So 60 is the geometric mean between 5 root 2 and 6 root 2. All right. So... Um, Let's look at one other way <clears throat> we could see some problems, and that's what if they give us the geometric mean in one of the numbers, and what's the other number that it's a geometric mean between? So let's suppose it was a question like this. 6 is the geometric mean between uh, so 4 6 is a geometric mean between 4 and what number? So now we're going to set this up. If they're giving us the geometric mean, that's the term that's going to denominator, one, numerator, the other. So there's my geometric mean. I'm not looking for it this time. This time they give it to us. 4 and what number? So now I'm just put my variable over here. So 6 is a ge geometric mean between 4 and what number? Again, we're going to uh, straight up cross multiply to solve this. We can simplify a proportion both vertically and horizontally. I look at this and I say, hey, 2 goes into 4 and 6. 2 goes into 4 twice, into 6 3 times. We can simplify vertically or uh, horizontally now. 2 goes into itself once, into 6 3 times. And now when we cross multiply, we get x equal to 9. So let's do one more of those. Let's see. Uh, let's put a. Uh, 3 root 3 is a geometric mean between 2 and what number? Just to give another radical. So now, again, we set up our proportion. 3 root 3, 3 root 3. Geometric mean goes in the denominator 1, numerator the other. Geometric mean between what? 2, two and what number? I'm going to put my x over there. Nothing in here reduces, right? So now we just have to straight up cross multiply. Get 2 times x is 2x, and I've got 3 root 3 times another 3 root 3. 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. Root 3 times root 3 is going to give us square root of 9, which is 3. And then 9 times 3 gives us 27. Divide both sides by 2, and we're going to get 13.5. So hopefully this will get you started. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at... Uh, the geometric means specifically in a right triangle when we draw an altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse. But this will give you some, uh, some more practice with radicals and uh, tonight's uh, homework is going to be looking at how do I find the geometric mean between two numbers and what if I give you the geometric mean and then one of the numbers that it's between, find the other number. So if you need more practice with this, uh, we'll go over this uh, more tomorrow, but hopefully this video helps you at least step into the right direction. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.